Taiwan is bursting with heaps of fun places to explore. Join me, Amber Hatfield, as I hit up travel hotspots, soak up some culture, and hunt down hidden gems. Let's go! We went to the Taidong 2024 International Balloon Festival, mm. and it was my first time. It was my first time. The Taiwan International Balloon Festival held in Taidong is a vibrant and colorful event that attracts balloon enthusiasts from around the world. It has been held annually since 2011 in the picturesque Luye Highland of Taidong, and it showcases a stunning array of hot air balloons in various shapes and sizes. This, against the backdrop of Taiwan's beautiful landscapes, creates an unforgettable experience. The Taidong Balloon Festival also invites pilots from all over the world. So one of the reasons why it's called the International Balloon Festival is because the pilots are actually international and so are the balloons. So you can see pilots from various different countries all around the world. I met some from Turkey, from Japan, from France. And it's not just the pilots, the balloons come from different countries as well. So it truly is an international balloon festival. There are even tethered balloon flights available to check out the scenery from the sky. And this year was my first year attending the Balloon Festival. I went there with my co-worker Chingan. And today we're going to talk all about the Taidong Balloon Festival. But before we get into sharing about the Balloon Festival itself, I want to talk about a few fun facts about hot air balloons and how they work. So hot air balloons are actually fascinating to learn about. The big, colourful part that floats in the sky is called the envelope, and it's made from this super strong and heat-resistant polyester or nylon, and it can be even as big as 6,000 cubic metres. Balloons can hold 10 people, sometimes less, sometimes even more in the basket. To make the balloon rise, there's a burner system and it uses pressurized propane to create flames and this heats the air inside the envelope, making it expand and become lighter, which then lifts the balloon off the ground. And the basket where the pilot and passengers stand is made from rattan. This is a lightweight and flexible material and it helps to reduce bumps when landing. And depending on the size of the balloon, the basket can carry anywhere from four to six people in Taiwan. Flying hot air balloons is a little bit like going on an adventure because the wind decides your direction. Basically, pilots will collect wind data before they go on each flight so they can understand how to control the balloon's height by heating the air inside and guiding them down to the perfect spot. But it's not an exact science and it depends on the wind. It's a magical way to explore the skies. Was it what you expected? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, I but I didn't expect such a vastness of the scene. Mm. Like you see more than 10 or 16 uh, air balloons flying one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about it. So when you go to the balloon festival, uh, we stayed in a place called Lu Ye. And it's about a 10, 15 minute drive to get to the Luye Highland, which is where the festival takes place. And this is like a, a big field, basically. And there's also a hill. So mm. down on the flat part, that's where all the balloons will take off from. And yeah. there is a hillside where everybody sits. So this balloon festival, we went there for the opening ceremony. And the opening ceremony happens really early, early. in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so we woke up around 4 and we get there before 5 a.m. And I thought that we might be one of the first ones there, stupidly. I don't know why. But we got there and there's already so many people. They only uh, took a small fee of like 50 NT dollars to park your scooter. Mm. And there were already a lot of scooters parking. We tried to make the sunrise, but the sun was already kind of coming up that when we were when we were getting there. So we didn't quite get to see it shift from complete darkness to light. Mm. But we got there, walked over the hill, and there's already a mass of people sat on the hill. Yeah. Set up with their 
picnic blankets and their cameras on the tripods and their little tents. Tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's families, there's like photographers, there's mm. just loads of people there already. And we found ourselves a good spot. As we arrived there, the air balloon wasn't up already. Uh -huh. Like they, they're still like flat uh, on the ground. At the opening ceremony, there, there was some some performances kind of sponsored by some companies. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. So With some mascots dancing. That's what I wanted to say. So in Taiwan, I feel like the mascot thing is a really big thing. Mm. And we don't really have this so much in the UK, but if you go to certain events in Taiwan, I feel like they always love to have mascots here. And it's kind of cute. They have them in different places, like all mm. these cute little characters. They love People love cute little characters, right? Yeah. So different um, ones from different companies, like from the PX Mart and yeah. the other like <laughs> other Fuli ones, uh -huh, uh, like a PX little bear, uh -huh. and then some that look like vegetables or things like that. What's the vegetable? I don't know, but I remember there's a little dancing guy. He looks like some kind of bean or like a green vegetable or oh. something. There's like lots of different uh, little <laughs> <laughs> little characters. So there's obviously a person inside mm. them dressed up in this big bubbly head mascot, yeah. and they go on the on the stage and they start doing all these funny dances. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty impressive to dance in this giant costume. <laughs> yeah. And apart from the mascots of different characters, there's also a lot of different characters of balloons. So you might just think that a balloon festival might just have normal balloon-shaped balloons, but mm -hmm. not this one. There's lots of interesting ones. So as you sit there and they do all the dancing with the mascots and they have this opening ceremony, they start to blow up all the balloons. Yeah. So Chingon was saying before, they're flat on the floor mm -hmm. and they start to blow them up slowly, you know, with the fire and everything. And they start slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger and inflating until they start one by one popping up and you can see the whole balloon and what it looks like. And they have so many cool ones and they don't have all of them at the opening ceremony. Some of the balloons actually are shown throughout the month because this mm. festival happens for the whole of most of July and August. So on different days, they will have different balloons. Yeah. But mm. at the opening ceremony, they had the certain select ones. These air, hot air balloons actually came from different countries mm -hmm. with different pilots. And especially there are some patterns that are like they used to kind of promote this event like Hello Kitty because it's the 50th anniversary of Hello Kitty uh -huh, yeah the Hello Kitty balloon has been shown at the Taidong Balloon Festival for already a few years yeah. but this Hello Kitty is kind of special because it has a outfit yeah it's like indigenous dress Bunun female dress they had all these different balloons some of them are big and like they, I mean they're very large especially mm. the Hello Kitty one it's very tall uh, they also had another one that was like a little prince one that's yeah, from France prince. Bear the Taipei mascot black bear Another one that's a dog, like a Yakult man, lots of different shapes as well. And they're really big balloons. So it takes a lot of people, a lot of workers to hold down on the basket to yeah. stop them from mm -hmm. flying. So they've got all these balloons in a really small area together and they have to blow them up and then they're all standing up and they have to wait until they can fly away. Mm. So the the person who was hosting telling us to, you know, to kind of encourage them and stay strong because there's many of them hanging off the basket using their body weight to mm. hold the basket down because the balloon's not allowed to fly yet and yeah. it has to wait his turn. So what was your favorite balloon, ching -an? Do you have a favorite? Um, I think the Hello Kitty one. Actually, all of them are very adorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... I don't know. I just thought that Hello Kitty, I love the Hello Kitty the most. <laughs> yeah, I think the colors of it as well. Like, yeah. it's a white Hello Kitty and it's wearing this blue dress. Yeah, it's very unique mm -hmm. in terms of its costume. Mm -hmm. costume. Yeah, definitely. Some other ones that stood out to me, the one I really liked was, there was this really cute balloon that had these heart eyes <laughs> and it also had arms coming out. It's so kind of hilarious. It, it's really funny. So as it started flying up, it's like arms are sticking yeah, out yeah. 
That's really cute. And I'm kind of in, I would kind of love to go back on another day as well because there are some balloons that were not at the opening ceremony that I would have loved mm. to see as well. Mm. Like there are some that are, there's like a fox which looks really cute mm. that I liked. Um, there's uh, one that looks kind of like a dinosaur, like a purple oh. dinosaur one. Because those shapes are not like traditional water drop shape according to the host the different shapes can take different effort to kind of blow up mm. not blow up inflate, inflate. blow up <laughs> yeah blow up i think it's right <laughs> and the last thing i want to talk about is chingan and i trying to get in a balloon for a balloon flight <sighs> so at the Taidong balloon festival you can do these flights in the balloon they're not a free flight though they are called a tethered flight mm. so you can go in but the balloon is still going to be tethered to the ground mm. but because we went on the opening ceremony day they weren't offering those flights in the morning they're only offering them in the afternoon so we went there really early in the morning. We saw all the balloons take off into the sky until mm. there is barely any left. I think Hello Kitty was left because she couldn't fly because she was too big. Mm. And the one that looked like a cake. Um, and then they were all gone. Everyone started to disperse and go home. And we went back for a nap. <laughs> and then mm. we came back in the afternoon because they have they were offering afternoon flights. Yeah. And they actually sell tickets online, but we hadn't managed to get a ticket online because they were sold mm. out. So you can go down and you can wait yeah, in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They start their flights in the afternoon at about 5.30. 5. So they start selling the ticket at 4. 5 p.m. 4. 4. 4. We got there at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Wait in the line. <laughs> Still in the heat. And one thing I really liked about it was that I do feel like the staff really did it very well. Mm. Um, they had set out seats, little stools for you to sit on to queue up yeah, in yeah, lines. Yeah. And I think when we got there, there were three lines ahead of us. We were the fourth line or maybe the fifth line. Mm. Um, and then we just waited and all the seats behind us started to fill up. And when it was time for them to start selling the tickets, the staff were really good at making sure that nobody skipped the line or mm. nobody did anything unfair. And they also made sure that only one seat person can buy two tickets. So you can't just go and buy for everyone and take mm. all the tickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we managed to get actually we actually managed to get a ticket for the balloon ride. But unfortunately <laughs> the the will wasn't appropriate yeah. for taking off. It's very sad. That they actually did tell us this. They said that it's normally more likely that you'll be able to fly in the morning because the weather is more stable. Yeah. In the afternoon in Taidong, more especially windy. in this area, it gets more windy. And they had a wind sock on the field and they say if the wind sock goes more than 45 degrees it's mm -hmm. too windy for the balloons to fly so we were waiting until about 6 10 p.m and then unfortunately they said you have to come return the tickets and none of the balloons are going to fly yeah. so we didn't get the opportunity to go up which is a bit disappointing but you can still take photo with the air balloon uh-huh with the fire yeah <laughs> <laughs> there were many people many tourists getting in the basket the balloon basket mm. and then the the balloon pilot would uh, pull the is it pull a chain and make the fire blow up outside yeah, the balloon yeah, and you can take yeah. a photo um but overall i feel like it was a really good experience i really enjoyed it even though we were busy running around and taking lots of pictures and stuff i did think it was fun it was nice yeah and the other thing that i like very much about waiting in the line is that there is a 7-eleven truck oh yeah <laughs> yeah so you as you wait because you you have to wait there for a few hours so it, it the weather is really hot and you can get a ice latte but we didn't get latte we just get americano <laughs> yeah some snacks drinks from the truck mm -hmm. yeah and i don't know it's just a uh, blessing <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen a 7-eleven truck before mm. have you seen one before i don't think so oh yeah it was my first time i think oh that's actually really cool i guess mm. they normally don't need it to be in truck form because in the city there's just 7-elevens everywhere yeah. but having a 7-eleven truck is a really fun idea yeah so until next time when we go to the balloon festival again maybe we'll get to go in a balloon and, and... actually fly in one but 
not this time maybe mm. we'll have to go again if you're interested in going to the balloon festival it goes on until august so you can still catch it and you can check on the website of the taidong 2024 international balloon festival to see which balloons will be showing on which days so you can see which ones you like and you can also book flights on the website and just like we did if you don't manage to book a flight on the website you can also go and wait there and hopefully get a ticket if you go mm. early enough on the day I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Let's Go. It was really fun going to the Taidong Balloon Festival. Ching and I had a great time and I hope you had a great time listening and you know more about it now. If there's anywhere that you would love me to go in Taiwan or to talk about, then you can send me a message, an email at emberesh at rti.org.tw and I'll see if I can make it happen. And I will see you in the next episode. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. You're tuning in to Radio Taiwan International, Taiwan's national broadcaster. Here at RTI, we have a range of entertaining and informative content for you to enjoy. You can find all of our content on our website at en.rti.org.tw. That's en.rti.org.tw for news, shows, and more. We're also on shortwave radio. If you're residing in South Asia, we broadcast from 1600 to 1700 UTC at 9405 kilohertz. From all of us here at RTI, we wish you a lovely day. Podcast, Google Podcast, SoundOn Podcast, Spotify. You name it, we're on it. You can find selected shows produced by RTI's English team on different streaming services. All you have to do is search for the show or type RTI. Find an episode you find interesting, hit play, and you'll learn more about Taiwan and its people.